Dare I say stability? If I do, we'll probably go all over the place. But right now, we're down 100, and we've been down 100 for much of the day, give or take 20 points either side. Our next guest says, all this selling has been overdone. He's got a book out, too. It's called Crisis of Responsibility. Let's talk the market, however, with David Barnson. He's also the CIO of the Barnson Group. David, welcome to the program. Good to be with you. So you're not worried about this selling. You think it's overdone. You're not worried about a bear market coming. You think we're going up from here, do you? I'd never worry about something happening in the very short term because my clients are investors, not traders. I have no opinion what happens tomorrow or Thursday, for that matter. Probably not Friday either. What I do care about is the next big movement that people not panic themselves out and, and miss out on something that is fundamentally important to their portfolio result. Is the next big move up? The, the next big move fundamentally is up. There's always things that can happen that are fundamental that can shake things up. Yep. Something in China, a geopolitical event, a military event. But all that notwithstanding, the events of last week were most certainly not fundamental. They were textbook technical. There's a lot of reasons why we now are able to see that. You don't worry about rising interest rates. Now, I, I say that because, look, the yield on the 10-year Treasury this morning is about 285. Yes. I don't think there's much reason to worry about a 285 10-year yield. A 285 10-year yield is nothing to worry about. If it was indicative that there really was significant inflation coming, then, of course, that yield would be moving higher in the future. That would put a strain on the multiple you'd want to put on earnings. That isn't what I see happening. This idea that higher wages creates inflation is one of the most absurd economic things that is uttered in our society. It drives me bonkers, in case you can't tell. Mm. The reality is that higher wages, last time I checked, are a good thing. We're talking about 2.9% year-over-year growth in wages. Yep. That's what put everything yep. into a, a tizzy. Coming on the back of the biggest corporate tax reform in a generation, we consider 2.9% problematic. Ultimately, real inflation could be an issue, but we're still coming out of a long deflationary cycle. It is not going to happen overnight. We're going to see CPI numbers tomorrow. There's Plenty of things to be monitoring, but ultimately, growing earnings drives the market. Earnings are growing. Now, you have clients, and they pay you to tell them where to invest. I know they do. Right? Yes, they, they do. pay you. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Good living, okay. Right. Well, treat our audience as non-paying clients. Um, who, where, which stocks are you buying? I understand you're into Blackstone. I, I am very much into Blackstone. We love that stock. We think that it's a classic case of a non-balance sheet sensitive, meaning we're not worried about their own balance sheet. They're just a free cash flow generator that's sharing that free cash flow with us. $33 a share now going to what? Uh, forty-five dollars. Whoa, 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 David Barnson, be careful there. Yeah, you should ask them where it's going. They'll tell you <laughs> right. something much higher. But yes, and uh, it's an eight percent yield while we wait. By the way, eight percent yield. Yes, it is. Now nah, you should have said that right up front. <laughs> no, <Nope. Don't, don't laughs> I was leaving you in suspense. <laughs> Never bury the lead, David. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one is Johnson and Johnson. And that's actually one we've owned for a long time. I intend to own it for the bulk of my career unless something significant changes. However, it really got cheap in that sell-off last week. It was sitting at 145, came back to 125. Yeah. I didn't think I'd get a $20 dip in J&J. We're buying more. Where's it going to? Um, I, I mean, I'll answer if you want me to, but it's not important. It, the point is, it's growing the dividend every year for ah. till kingdom come. Exxon, number three. Yeah, that one also got uh, cheap last week and a little more so than some of the others. And our argument for the integrated oils is that we're going to benefit downstream and upstream. So higher price of oil is good, but fundamentally, they just simply have great margins right now that they're able to sell into the marketplace. It's you know an undervalued stock. But you know what really got me going is Blackstone with an 8% <laughs> yield. 8% yield for the last five years. They have to share that free cash flow. It's, it's a public trading partner. Where have I been? Where have I, been? I missed it yeah. totally. Uh, David, you're all right. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks Free for advice me. for our viewers. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. What do you mean anytime? Be careful. <laughs> All right.